So these types of ways of calculating how uh, well the mean or expectation models the range of values the random variable takes is done through this concept of a tail bound. And as I was finishing up the previous lecture, I wanted to just give you a brief idea of the first type of such a calculation, uh, and this is called Markov's inequality, named after the person who first wrote it down and found it. Uh, so a simple form of that says that uh, it's a relationship between values of x and expectation, and the deviation, which is t, says that the probability that x is greater than or equal to t is less than or equal to the expected value of x, absolute always, in this case, divided by t for all t greater than or equal to 0. So let x be a non-negative random variable, and therefore if you take the absolute value of x, if it's negative, you basically get this property for free. The probability that x is bigger than or equal to some parameter, you pick t for t greater than 0, is always less than or equal to its expectation divided by t. Just a useful fact to have in our pocket as we move forward, because this will be used in the next, perhaps more direct computation of an even better bound that we will be using in our own machine learning and other lectures. So informally, Markov inequality states that the probability of x taking a value much larger than its expectation, if you look at that formula, is small. And if you look as this example of something called a uniform or a normal distribution, sorry, uh, a normal distribution or a Gaussian distribution, as it's sometimes called, it looks like this very popular bell curve. The probability, if you look at this, that you'll be very far away from the mean, say, past this A value or past this minus A value, gets small, quite dramatically small as you move A out and minus A out, because the curve has most of its area around here. That's the intuition. And that intuition will play out very sharply when we do the next calculation building on Markov's inequality in the, immediately after this calculation. So to restate, what are we trying to claim? We're trying to claim that the probability, and I will not say absolute value of x anymore, we'll assume it's non-negative. So the probability that x is greater than or equal to t is less than or equal to the expectation of x divided by t. Okay? So let's define, and we will do this quite often moving forward, a new random variable i, which is an indicator. It indicates that x is bigger than or equal to t, it takes on a value 1. That's a flag. So it raises its hand and says, I'm bigger than or equal to 1, uh, t, I'm sorry. Or it takes on a value 0 if x is less than t. OK? So a simple observation based on the fact that how the indicator random variable is defined is t times i less than or equal to x. And because the indicator random variable takes on values of 1 only when x is bigger than t, right? the expectation of i is the same as probability x greater than or equal to t. Because x takes on a value 1 when it's bigger than t, the definition of a, an expectation, you sum that many values of i that are bigger than t, multiply them individually by the probabilities. So that's simply the probability. So we have two simple observations to make here. So the probability that x greater than or equal to t, which is this quantity here, right, is the expectation of x divided by t by using this relationship, okay, which from the linearity of expectation, we can immediately conclude because e power t, e, sorry, e expectation of tx is t times expectation of x. This is simply expectation of x divided by t, because t is a constant. So for further details, if you want to look beyond the slides, on the first slide of this lecture, we also had the reference to the source material for this 
particular lecture. It's the book by Professor Smithsonmacher and Opfel. And we, it, whenever relevant, if it's something that you could refer to beyond the lecture, we've also included uh, a pointer to that in terms of a page number. So now we have Markov's inequality. We really charge forward to do what we needed to do from the beginning of this lecture. That is a sharp way of determining how much of the probability is revolving around the mean. For a slightly more interesting and general type of a random variable, which takes on probabilities when what you want happen, which can change over the random variable. So, so far, when we get a 1, it was always a probability p. When you get a 0, it was 1 minus p. But now we allow probabilities to change with the index of the random variable. So it's a more general statement. So to do that, we have this concept of what I just said, modeled through something called a Poisson trial. These are informally 0, 1 independent random variables where each random variable does not have necessarily the same distribution. And these indicator random variables will be used again to model these Poisson trials or Poisson random variables. So in this more general setting, let x1 to xn be the independent Poisson trials where the probability that the ith random variable takes on a value 1 is p sub i and let x be the sum of the n such random variable trials which is sum of x1 plus x2 plus x3 and so on. But now we must note we are summing over random variables. And let mu be the expectation of this sum, which is x. Then the theorems that we know about how far we could be from mu for these types of random variables can be written down in many forms. And three useful forms are written below, where for, for example, for any delta bigger than zero, we can say that the probability that x is greater than or equal to one plus delta times the mean is less than this expression. The intuition behind this, as we saw in the picture early on, is as you move more and more away from the mean, mu, you would basically get a very rapidly, de exponentially decreasing amount. So most of the value of the random variable is close to the mean, is the other form of thinking about this intuition. So pictorially, what that gives us is if you look at this as our distribution, and that's our mean, and that is delta, as you get further away, the area under this region, say the gray region, or this blue region, is much smaller than this region that's adjacent to the mean mu, and therefore the probability of having value greater than one plus delta goes down much, much faster than what happens, that's the area to the right of this and the left of this, compared to what would happen below delta. That's the intuition there. So we will pause here and try to digest this fact for a couple of minutes before we dive into a complete proof.